we're going to talk about uh, the idea of happiness and uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And this comes from a website, comes from a blog I re- uh, that somebody posted, um, at Mr. Money Mustache. Um, that's the blog's name uh, that has this this entry. And uh, I kind of wanted to talk about uh, that a little bit. Um, so basically, uh, what this guy says is, uh, it's a chemical release that you know is part of emotional responses, um, and 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 that's that is true. You know, dopamine, serotonin, you, uh, they all create euphoria. They all kind of create happiness. The lack of those things can create depression, um, adrenaline, uh, you know, things like that. Like uh, the emotional responses can be triggered by. Uh, chemical and hormonal releases and imbalances. We, we do know that, but they're not the only thing that, that control um, emotional responses. Uh, you know, they, they can also be controlled by environmental factors and uh, reward factors. So, uh, you know, environmental factors like being in a place, uh, a certain setting, certain actions, certain events that have taken place in your time, right? These are just sort of the basics of uh, of some of the uh, you know elements of psychology is all of those things can contribute to uh, emotional response and uh, and rewards are like drugs <laughs> drugs give you a pretty good reward and there are a lot of different types of drugs that give you uh, a variety of amazing rewards uh, I am I am uh, uh, per- I purchased the, a, a drug that I have been taking since I was 13 coffee uh, nice little fucking Circle K logo on there. Uh, they, they ain't giving me shit. <laughs> but, uh, you know, coffee, caffeine, that's a drug. Nicotine, that's a drug. Uh, all of these drugs release certain, you know, create create certain bonds and, and release certain uh, emotional responses. Um, I do get more focused and I do find myself, uh, weirdly enough, I do get relaxed when I take coffee. When I take when I take coffee, uh, when I drink a cup of coffee, I um, I do find myself a, a little bit more relaxed, and I think my version of relaxation comes from uh, my ability to focus, right? So when I'm focused on something, uh, I am more relaxed. I am more in tune with that thing, and uh, and coffee does help. It does help with that. So so drinking coffee. Um, has the the reward of giving me more focus and giving me more calm uh, that uh, then leads to more productivity thereby giving me more happiness right when I'm productive and I'm, I'm contributing to something when I'm creating something um, I am I am happier that's that's something that uh, I get happiness from well we also have relationships that's something right people people that you have relationships with um, that that provides us with emotional responses you know positive or negative but the relationships we have uh contribute to that so the real question i think we need to ask ourselves here is uh, are we a happy society are we a happy society right and uh this guy looks through the maslow's hierarchy of needs um which uh if you're unfamiliar is is this pyramid that kind of addresses like what uh human beings needs are uh in terms of weight like kind of like the food pyramid which i don't know if that's a myth or not some people have said it's a myth some people have said that it's real i don't fucking know but but it's a thing that you we've learned about and maslow's hierarchy of needs is very similar to that um so we're gonna go from bottom to top uh on the maslow's hierarchy of need this is what maslow says uh, you know, people people need this very bottom thing the most, and then that second most, third most, fourth, fifth, right? You get the, you get the idea. You know how a pyramid works. Uh, uh, but uh, the first one uh, that he points out is physiological. Physiological. That's uh, that's the base. That's what we need the most of in order to uh, in order to find our happiness. To uh, you know, uh, to, to engage with the world, we need physiological things: sleep, food, water. Those are the big main ones that are, that contribute to uh, our, our physio- physio- physiological needs. Um, tripping on my words. So, does society have uh, a lot? Uh, it's it's physiological needs met. Well, in terms of water, no. <laughs> Look at what the fuck is going on in Flint. 
uh, Flint, Flint's water is poisoned. It's poisoned, right? Cor- private corporations took over that. Lead's leaching into people's waters. They're 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 getting brain diseases, skin diseases, right? And and nobody's and the city's not doing anything to help them. The government's not doing anything to help them. Their water is literally being poisoned. Pittsburgh has uh, lead in its water. That's where I'm from, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has lead in its water. And uh, I I know that there's a couple people that I'm friends with that opted in to like get a a filtration device put on their faucets because uh you know low-income neighborhoods can't just afford bottles of water all the time right those crates of water are expensive and they can't afford uh to just go and and spend 50 bucks on uh buying a brita filter that filters out lead those those are also very expensive we bought them they're very expensive um so the city was going to give out uh lead uh, filters uh, you know those pure filter kind of things for lead specifically and uh and they were going to start with uh like families and single moms uh because they have kids and stuff right and they never got them i never heard of anybody that got them in pittsburgh flit they're just shipping bottles of water to these people and they're like yeah you fucking use this you know nestle's got your back if you can pay 2.99 a bottle Oh, we got your back for two ninety nine a bottle. So, in terms of that, no, our physiological needs are not being met because we privatize a, a, a natural resource, uh, and and even then, you have like the fucking uh, head of Nestle that was like, what? No, it's not a human right; it's a food stuff, so we can ma- we can make money off of it. Uh, and I tweeted at Nestle at one point uh, about that, and they're like, "Hey, fuck you! Cleaned it up." They didn't say that exactly, right? But like the, the they they kind of came at me. And they was like, he cleared it up. He cleared it up in a statement. Okay, I was like, how did he clear up the phrase "water is not a human right"? What he means by that is that it is a human right, but it's the human right to make money off of whatever the fuck we choose to make money off of. Okay, you socialist fuck. Like, they might as well come out and said that shit. So that physiological need is not being met, right? In terms of food, uh, I think our food is also controlled by corporations. Uh, and organic foods, if you look at organic foods, it, they are um, uh, very expensive. Uh, we have food deserts in this country. There should be no spot in America being the richest country in the world where, where, where you should have a food desert. By the way, we also can feed the entire world with the amount of food that we uh, we have now. Uh, you know, like we 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 don't have a food shortage in the world, so there shouldn't be any food deserts, and there shouldn't be any starving people in the world. We can feed everybody in the world. The problem is that there is a distribution problem. Forty percent of food goes to waste. A lot of that is from it, it, it gets uh, caught up in the distribution network in and of itself. So we have a distribution problem when it comes to food. Peter Joseph talks a lot about uh, the distribution problems with food. Uh, I did a whole video on it last year. Um, uh, you know, you can check that out as well. But, uh, you know, some of the things that, that uh, they talk about in terms of, like, getting rid of food is if it doesn't look right. Like, aesthetics. Ugly fruit people won't buy. So, the farmers have to do, like, aesthetic quality control. They're like, oh yeah, this is the hot one. This is the fuckable fruit. Huh? This is the fruit where you're like, yeah, I'm gonna eat that peach because I think I'm gonna fuck it. In my as I'm eating it in my mind, I'm having sex with a peach. Mm, that's what I yeah, that's that's what we should be making our food decisions on. Not whether it's nutritious, good for us, and taste yummy, but do we wanna put our dicks in it or not? That really, yeah, that's the way we need to make our decision about that. That's the way we need to go with it. So, in terms of food, no, I don't think we're meeting uh, meeting our needs in, in this hierarchy. Uh, and sleep, who, if if I may quote one of my favorite rappers, uh, P.O.S., who even gets much of that uh, these days? Because we don't. We don't. You know, uh, we. Most people are, are working two jobs. 
I know I, I were I mean I you know stuff that I do is is, is like multiple people jobs and I, like I work pretty constantly I'm on the road a whole lot uh, my touring schedule is pretty intense and, and I and I do like it that way I, I, I'm, I'm not complaining about it or anything I'm just kind of letting you guys know but I, I you know I try to start my day between eight and nine o'clock in the morning and usually don't get done um, on a good day until six or seven. Uh, responding to emails, writing, uh, and then and then it's like I'll go perform at night. Uh, so you know, some nights it, it's I'm, j- I'm just you know doing some kind of work all day. But there are people that do that anyway because they work two jobs. My mom's working two jobs right now. Uh, and uh, you know, you you get so exhausted that without any sort of break like you don't get enough sleep you don't get like that REM cycle your body isn't recharging itself you you're you're more prone to getting sick you're more prone to having dietary issues and things of that sort psychological issues and uh, uh, you know so so our society is not built to meet our physiological needs because the way that our society is constructed is uh, to, to push our physiological needs right to, to make uh, other things more important uh, than the physiological need itself. Which it shouldn't be. Which it shouldn't be. We should be taking into consideration uh, that human beings need uh, good food, clean water, uh, and enough enough time for ourselves um, you know, to do things that we want to do, including sleep. Look, I'm guilty of it too, right? I'm guilty of not being able to sleep. Um, you know, uh, I, I usually function pretty well on six hours. Uh, but there's some nights, especially when I'm on the road, you know, I'm having a good time. I, I, I'm, I'm talking to people. I'm hanging out. We're having some drinks. And I don't get back at, at, to, to the place I'm staying till well, 1, 2 o'clock. And then, you know, it's like you do your nighttime routine. So I'm not in bed until 2, 33 o'clock in the morning. And then I'm back up before 8 o'clock again because of the natural circadian rhythm of things. And I got to get up, get my day started, and then, you know, do do all of my promo work, all of my emailing stuff, and then get on the road, drive to the next city, and do it all over again. Um, so I, you know, I, I completely have uh, operated on sleep debt. Sleep debt, as they call it. But it's not healthy, so I do. I do take. Uh, I do. I am uh, working on that for myself. Uh, is is taking some time uh, for for me to kind of just relax. Uh, I do little things here and there throughout the day, right? I like. I'll watch uh, some comic book stuff. I like comic books, so I'll watch like people uh, that read comic books, or I'll watch some Star Wars videos. I'll bullshit with some friends for a little while, um, and. Uh, uh, what else do I do? I play, you know, I have a video game on my phone that I like to play, um, and, uh, you know, it's just stuff to take my mind off things, uh, I'll watch a show, you know, I'll, I'll Netflix, uh, and just and do nothing, that's, yeah, uh, I, I, that's what I like, you know, to kind of down, unwind, um, and, uh, and get myself ready to go to bed. Next up on the hierarchy of needs is uh, is safety and security, right? Worry and health. That's what it's about. Uh, and with the way that the, the corporate media operates now, it, you you would think that you're in constant danger all the time, every second of every fucking day. That's sort of how corporate media operates because they're 24 hours. You don't need a fucking 24 hour news network because you're you're just you're pulling it fucking nothing right and and now you have to make this little story into something way bigger than what it is right uh and and, uh, we've we've created enemies for ourselves through the media uh the media is sort of its own little propaganda wing so we we've created enemies for ourselves uh because of the media politicians a lot of politicians will do it too right instead of actually accepting the problem uh of uh, uh, uh of, of a wealth gap that uh, we have a giant wealth gap and a, and a, a system that is controlled by money um, and legislation is dictated by who gets to funnel more money into what laws. Uh, they just scapegoat it. Immigrants, gay people, Muslims, poor people, they're all, they're all the enemy. Oh, they're coming, they're coming to take your things. Look out for the immigrants. Oh, God, no. That's like how they freak the fuck out about this shit. 
and they create enemies. They make you think that your neighbors, right, anybody with a different skin color, anybody that might speak a different language is uh, is an enemy, oh, right? Like, that's, that's what they kind of do. And we see it, and we see it kind of evolve, right? Republicans do it. Democrats do it too. They're, they're, right now, the Dems are doing it with uh, with Tulsi Gabbard and Bernie Sanders. They um, they are uh, taking Tulsi's Hindu philosophies that she believes in and uh, and demonizing it. And they're taking Bernie's socialist philosophies and demonizing it. They're using it against them uh, and you know saying that you're a traitor. If you believe in these sort of things, right? That's how they. That's how they portray things. Politicians are doing it. The media is doing it. Uh, and and you know, we're, we're made to believe that these ideas are our enemies. That these ideas are going to destroy uh, our safety and security. And they're gonna, you know, come out for. Oh, they're taking all your shit. They're taking away your safety. Oh, the democracy is in danger. The democracy, when really, the reason that democracy is in danger is because you're being fooled into thinking that you're constantly in danger by these ideas, right? These ideologies that are coming in, uh, these ideas of taking care of each other and um, doing what's socially responsible, uh, taking care of the environment, taking care of uh, the working class people, making sure people are treated fairly and equally and things like that. Um, and, and with that in mind too, you know, in terms of health, uh, the arguments that we're having in the, in the healthcare debate is, Look, healthcare is a human right, period. It's a human right. Everybody deserves good health, right? And, and the ideas of, of freedom, right? The freedom to do whatever the fuck I want, right? Then, yeah, you should, you should be free to, to take part in, in uh, some vices here and there. And if those vices end up having some negative effects on your health, which is unfortunate regardless of what happened, um, you should not be put into crippling debt because you went to the doctor to take care of some of these issues. Um, especially because your fucking food and water are poison. They're poisoning our food and water, and then they're like, oh, but we're not going to offer any fucking health care after we poison you, too. Like, you have, you gotta, you gotta fucking deal with it, buddy. Uh, you gotta fucking deal with it. Don't stress out our system. We earned this Cadillac insurance. One step higher from safety and security is love and belonging because we are tribal creatures. Uh, as much as we uh, don't want to think that we are, we are tribal creatures. We like the tribes, right? Uh, and, and you can see this all around us. Look at what happened in 2016. Uh, the people that, the diehards that voted for Trump voted because, uh, because he spoke to them, uh, said he was part of their tribe, and gave them something to belong to, right? And so, so you know, there was a big contingent of the white working class that voted for this guy because he just talked to them. Democrats didn't. Hillary Clinton didn't. They didn't go out there and fucking talk to the working class people. They're not trying to... And look, Trump didn't have any plans or policies, but it didn't fucking matter because, because he gave people something to belong to and if you give some people something to belong to they'll go along with whatever it is so it can either be something genuine like bernie sanders like tulsi gabbard andrew yang you know a couple of these people that are out in politics now um or you can be a huckster like trump and 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 make a bunch of platitudes right i think elizabeth warren is in that category of, of platitudes too i think she offers a lot of people some platitudes uh, doesn't really offer them a whole lot of real plans, real progressive ideals. Um, so, you know, but as long as you make people feel like they belong to a thing, they uh, or, or you are going to help them belong to a thing, uh, they're, they're in. Really what we need to start doing is uplift everyone, not just people who line up with your own belief system or are part of your, uh, your, your particular uh, political or uh, social identity, right? We need to stand up for everybody. Everybody needs to help each other out and, and you can't leave people behind because when you leave people behind, you isolate them and then you know, they, they, they become victims of, of liars, hucksters, cheats, and manipulators. 
So leaving people behind is not really a fucking option. Uh, above that is esteem, which is your accomplishments. Uh, that's what you know your esteems are. And, and I think it's important to set goals for you, right? You, you should set goals for yourself. Like I, I, I try to do that for myself. I used to beat myself up all the time. Uh, you know, of like, because I was like, oh, I'm not getting into a comedy club, or uh, oh, I, you know, I didn't get booked for this gig, or I didn't get into this comedy festival, or, or so on and so forth. But uh, you can set goals for yourself and uh, and make them reasonable, and and treat yourself with some kindness in order to achieve those goals. Give yourself some time and flexibility, uh, and and just be good to yourself in, in achieving these goals, right? And and you don't have to be, they don't have to be like large, massive goals either. Um, like one of the goals that I have uh, that's sort of a bigger goal is 30 to 50 people in any city that I go to. Certain cities have achieved this goal, certain cities I haven't achieved this goal. And the cities that I haven't achieved the goal, I always try to evaluate like, okay, what could I have done differently to uh, help bring more people in? Did I, did I talk to somebody um, that, uh, could, that could help bring 10 people into the room? Um, uh, or is willing to do a street team type thing, or, or, or they have a different men- the technique or a different ideology about what brings people into into certain venues, right? So, uh, but uh, I don't. I try not to beat myself up too much. It's it doesn't. You know, whenever it's like five or six people show up, I try not to be like super downtrodden about it, uh, because those five or six people still showed up. They're still there. They're still hanging out. You know, so uh, I, I get a little sad about it, but I don't beat myself up about it. I still, I still look at it and say, you know what? It's five or six people that, if you hadn't done what you did, wouldn't have shown up anyway. At least it's not an empty room. We're on the right track. But one of the other things is external appreciations uh, will follow the fact that you treated yourself well. Right? External appreciations are important. Um, you know, if somebody does a good job, if uh, if somebody is excited about a thing, they're proud of something, like, they want other people to be excited about things like that, too. Uh, you know, uh, it's just it's just something that I think we all kind of need, and we all can give each other, uh, and, and being, you know, being objective and kind to each other. Uh, here, the, I will say that I think social media has made us crave external appreciation way fucking more. You know, like we're, we we like post something and we're like, where are the likes? <gasps> where are the likes? You know, and the way social media works is like the algorithm is only looking for something that social media has approved. Uh, so there are certain things that I say and I do, like I post it up and I'm like, all right, let's see what how much attention this really gets. You know, like who's shown this sort of stuff. I almost have 3,000 people that like my Facebook page, which is fucking awesome, by the way, uh, to the people that like my Facebook page thank you, you guys are fucking dope, um, you know, like, I have, uh, 200, almost 300 people on, uh, on my YouTube channel, which is dope, thank you for subscribing to the YouTube channel, uh, tell your friends, tell your friends, uh, <laughs> so, uh, and, and those are, like, super awesome accomplishments for me, right, um, and part of the reason why social media controls the external, uh, appre- uh the, yeah, the external appreciation is because they determine what gets seen by who. Like, so even if you like my page, you might not even see that I posted this video. If you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, you might not see that I posted a new video uh, because they determine that, right? And, and it's hard to get newer people because they determine who gets to see that sort of stuff, how many people are getting to see it. 3,000 people on my Facebook page, uh, some posts only eight people see. That's a fraction of a percent. How, that's fucking crazy. How is that possible? But they're controlling our, uh, our, our, our need for external appreciation. So if you do things that are more approved and more in line with the status quo and what Facebook or Twitter or any of these other social medias uh, determine, then you get more external appreciation. You can feel all good and happy and cozy with yourself, right? What I have noticed gets a whole lot is is uh posts that tear each other down those those posts pop up a lot on my feed i don't i don't particularly care for them but they do they show up a lot on my feed and really the question we need to ask ourselves is why are we tearing each other down right why can't we why can't we um uh, enact more 
supportive and positive interactions, especially online on this medium. Uh, it, instead of it being like, well, there's anonymity here, I can just be mean. I don't have to look at somebody in the face. Well, you can do the same thing with liking somebody, right? Or, or, or being encouraging of somebody. You can say, hey, I disagree with your, with your platform, but you, know, you, you, you made some very good arguments. You, you, you got me thinking, so thank you for that. Cool, you, you know, the disagreement's there, you were honest with them, but you didn't have to be a, a, a total shit about it. But if that's what's encouraged on social media, uh, then of course we're gonna do that because we're seeking that external uh, ex- uh, appreciation and acknowledgement, um, which is controlled by social media. And uh, if they're dictating what people get to see, then yeah, people are gonna follow suit. It's all about breaking that programming, right? If you want, if you want to I- increase your happiness by esteem. Uh, I think we I think we should practice a little bit more um, positivity and common courtesy with each other um, and compassion with each other. You know, uh, saying hey, you know, you did something that I wasn't particularly a fan of, um, and instead of the other person getting defensive about it, we go, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, blah blah blah. But let's talk about it and figure it out, uh, and you know, uplift each other. That's what we need to do. The tippy top of the pyramid. We are at the tippy top of the pyramid, folks. Self-actualization. This is creativity and growth. Um, This is the critical thinking aspect of things. The critical thinking aspect of things. Uh, Reflection, really looking into yourself. Um, I think this is also where the ideas of forgiveness and redemption come from. Right? And and really, uh, when when you have critical thinking, when you uh, are engaged in self-reflection and understand what's going on around you and kind of take a little inventory it it helps you move forward from things right um and uh, again it's it's the honesty of of where we are and again i'm not perfect either i fucked up a bunch of times and uh when i fuck up if somebody tells me i fucked up um i i do evaluate myself i do i do look at how i could have done things differently what what i could do better right like what even in terms of a gig like if i fucking bomb I go, well, why didn't that work? Like, what wasn't I reading about that crowd? How could I have made them feel a little bit more comfortable um, about some of the heavier issues that I've brought up uh, rather than saying, well, I should, I should either change my entire style of comedy to, to meet somebody else's needs than, than meet my own, um, to, to kind of stifle my creativity, but rather communicate my creativity in, in, a, in a more effective way is sort of the, the idea behind it, right? Um, and and this, in the tippy top of the, of the self-actualization is, uh, is that, you know, you're trying to create something rather than destroy something. You're trying to live your life through, through uh, creation, through the, these positive means of moving forward. Um, and uh, having that self-reflection uh, about whether it makes you happy and how can you take that happiness and share it with others um, and that I think that's what this is all about I think that's what this this uh, level of need is all about here's here's the problem I have with the with, with the, uh, the, the Maslow pyramid right I, I think all of these five things that we've talked about uh, physiological safety security love belonging uh, esteem and self-actualization all of them need to work in tandem with each other rather than just be stacked on top of each other right so maybe it's not a pyramid maybe it's a, a cube of sorts I'm not sure uh, I, I don't like the notion that uh, you know we need less self-actualization than, than physiology I think we do need physiology uh, and self-actualization we also need safety and security because they all kind of play into each other you know um, they, they all kind of help us uh, work our way into f- to figuring out who we are and what we what we enjoy, what we like, and what our hap- where where our happiness comes from, and uh, try to engage in that, try to follow follow through in that, right? Have the pursuit of happiness in there, um, and we need to have some flexibility in these needs as well. Uh, there's going to be times that you know you're you're going to need more of the physiology then you do the, the creativity and the self-actualization. And, and there's gonna be times where you need more safety and security than you do the, the uh, esteem and the appreciation, right? It, it, because uh, 
uh, that's what's gonna that's what's driving the hap the, the, the vehicles of, of happiness at that point so I think these are these are pretty like even an important um, needs uh, and, you know th- this this aspect of it is is sort of like the the biology meeting the the psychological because all of these things contribute to um, those those releases of chemicals in your brain that kind of relate to happiness and depression and that sort of stuff. Um, so I think we need to work in tandem. I think and and it and it is hard and it, it we we need to take a lot of practice into it because I think the way that our society is organized is not to uh, uh, to to help you balance all of these things. It's more or less kind of predicated on hyper focusing on one. Uh, and not, and so the other ones fall behind, and then you kind of have to play catch up. And it, it, but but there is a balance that can be achieved, right? And, and our and our brains are very good at um, multitasking and doing multiple things uh, all at once. But it takes practice to do that sort of stuff. It takes practice to operate your brain on that level. Um, and and I wholeheartedly believe that humanity can do it. Human beings have all the capabilities of doing it. And and part of getting to that level is shedding that propaganda, shedding that, uh, that control, um, that, uh, you know, uh, the, giving the control of, of, uh, appreciation to, to, uh, something like Facebook, you know, giving the control of, uh, safety and security to like the mainstream media, taking away the physiological, uh, needs and giving it to the, the corporations and being okay with that. So, um, I think I do think that you know this is sort of a, a, a big challenge that we have to get to a point um, where we become the the um, you know the, the people that are driving uh, where our happiness comes from and where our happiness takes us, uh, rather than having other people control um, these needs and uh, and the vehicle of happiness. So, just some of my thoughts on that. Uh, Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Haha. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy, and I'm on tour pretty frequently. You can check out all of my tour dates on my website, ramanoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, in the next week, I will be in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Champaign, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Bloomington, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you're in those cities, go to my website, grab your tickets, come hang out with me. Once again, you can check out all of my tour dates at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll hope to see you on the road.